I'm gonna tell you a story. When I was a freshman in high school, I signed up for eight clubs. I was on the track team, I did mock trial, theater, acapella, I volunteered at a soup kitchen. I was studying two languages at once. To your average person, these are all activities that colleges like to see. But don't listen to your average person. Signing up for those eight clubs was the worst mistake of my life. I was continually stressed out about making every meeting and keeping up my grades at the same time. And I basically wasted two years of my life with activities that I thought colleges cared about. In the spring of my sophomore year, I dropped most of my activities. I felt like a failure. I couldn't handle the pressure anymore. I didn't know this at the time, but it was quitting those extra activities that gave me the time and motivation to do the things I really cared about. And it was quitting that got me accepted into several Ivy League colleges, including my dream school, Princeton. I'm Greg Smith, and today I'm going to tell you which activities colleges don't care about. I'm going to tell you exactly why colleges don't care about these activities, even though many people think that they do. Now, it's never easy to quit an activity in high school. Maybe you feel like you're letting down the team or you're just giving up. Maybe quitting an activity is hard, but you know what else is hard? being an Ivy League student. So if you want to change your admissions decision, you're also going to have to change the activities that you do if they're on this list. Luckily for you and for me, it's not hard for you to click that like button and hit subscribe for weekly college admissions videos. Just do that right now before we jump into the video. The number one activity that colleges don't care about is sports. Everyone has played a sport, and it might feel unnatural for you to quit a sport and not be doing one at all. But hear me out, I'm going to convince you that in most cases, doing a sport is utterly useless for your college applications. First, sports take up lots of time when compared to other activities. You practice for several hours a day after school, and you often have these games that last into the evenings, or if you do track or something like that, meets that can go all weekend. To give you a real life example, when I ran track in high school, I was doing about 8 hours a week of practice, and I had a 5 hour meet every other week. Because I ran for 2 3 month seasons, that means I spent approximately 270 hours on track per year. Aside from the crazy time commitment, when you play a sport you are not demonstrating anything unique about yourself to colleges. Besides getting really good at the sport, there's nothing you can really do to stand out. Whereas, there are lots of other clubs and activities you can pursue to show colleges qualities that they really do care about, such as leadership, creativity, innovation, and proactiveness. Now, of course, if you get really good, and I mean really, really good, you should absolutely stick with your sport. Recruiters will go the extra mile to get you accepted into the college, even if your GPA and extracurricular activities aren't up to par. Another case where you should stick to a sport is if you are on track to become the team's captain. If you do this, then in your essays, you can talk about how being the team's captain improved your leadership ability. Leadership is a quality highly desired in college applications. Generally speaking though, colleges don't care that you play JV basketball, and neither should you. If you are passionate about your sport but not really good at it, try to become a sports writer for your school newspaper. Maybe volunteer to coach little kids in the sport that you're interested in, or start a blog or YouTube channel about the sport. Any of these will show creativity, passion, and innovation, which are all qualities that colleges do care about. If you asked 100 people what came to mind when they thought of college activities, the number one answer would undoubtedly be volunteer work. Volunteer work has been touted as an activity that colleges really like to see, and suddenly high school students have a vested interest in going to homeless shelters, handing out sandwiches, other types of traditional community service. Now personally, I don't think that you should be doing volunteer work solely to get into your dream college in the first place. Take it from me, I did one of these traditional volunteer opportunities for a year when I was a freshman because I thought it would look good for college, and I felt super unfulfilled by the work I was doing. But because I'm super interested in music, music and performance, I started a street performing club my senior year with some of my closest friends. We went out to the streets, 
performed and asked for donations to this amazing music charity in my local city. We ended up raising thousands of dollars through that club and that was volunteer work that Princeton was really interested in seeing. The bottom line is, if you're going to do some sort of charitable work and include it on your college application, make sure it has something to do with what you like to do and you're not just doing it for the sake of racking up community service hours. For example, if you're super interested in language, you could tutor English to low-income ESL students. If you are really into biology, how about organizing a fundraiser for a disease that really fascinates you? All I'm trying to say is, colleges really care that all of your activities have a theme in common and that you're not just doing volunteer work for college. If you're struggling with brainstorming different ways that your passion can be related to some sort of volunteer service, why don't you just leave a comment below explaining your situation and I'll try to get back to you as best I can. But if you really want to know which activities will work best for you specifically, I highly recommend that you check out our sponsor, Crimson Education. Crimson provides top-of-the-line college consulting, including expert advice on extracurricular activities tailored to your specific situation. They will also put together a whole team of admission specialists to help you go over, revise, and polish your application. It's also probably worth noting that 87% of Crimson students get into one of their top three choice colleges. If you use the link in the description to sign up with Crimson, they will give you a free consultation about your application and they will give you a recommendation as to how they can best help you. Definitely check it out if you're interested. Let's get back into activities that colleges don't care about. I want to let you in on a little secret. Just because you're part of a club doesn't mean that you should put it on your college application. Some high school clubs are a lot of fun to be a part of, and I'm definitely not telling you to quit all of your clubs simply because you won't be putting them on your college application, but far too often I see students worrying about the number of clubs they're a part of, because they really think colleges care about that. If this is you, don't worry, I did the exact same thing. The case with most clubs is, anybody can sign up and show up. It's really not that hard and it doesn't make you stand out. For example, when I was a senior in high school, I showed up to the astronomy club, French club, poker club, maybe about one third of the time each, and they all considered me a member, simply because I showed up some of the time. That said, if you put in the hard work and dedication required, you can impress colleges with your participation in a club. The first thing colleges look at when they see a club that you're a part of is your position in the club. If you are an officer of the club, or better yet, a founder, you are showing colleges that your friends and peers see you as a natural leader, and in the latter case, proactive about getting others excited about your passion as well. For example, I only founded my street performing club once I knew that my passion was music and performance, and I brought a lot of my friends together who had similar passions. If you are not an officer of the clubs that you're currently in, don't worry. What matters more to colleges than any title that you may hold in a club is the contributions that you've made to the club while you were a part of it. Think about it. What good is a leader if they don't make changes? If you're the president of a club or even just a member, what's really going to make colleges interested in you is the creative, out-of-the-box steps that you take to improve the club. Let me give you a real-life example. In senior year of high school, I was one of the co-presidents of the school's all-male a cappella group. Because the group was classified as a club, we weren't really allowed to hold auditions or reject people from the group. This meant that during the first few weeks of rehearsal, we were basically spending all of our time helping just two people who really couldn't get the pitches. Everyone else felt left out and felt bored because they knew what they were doing, but we weren't rehearsing with them. To fix this problem, my co-president and I started holding more sectional rehearsals. That basically means we held rehearsals for one voice part at a time. The results were fantastic. We were no longer wasting the time of the people that were doing great, and the people who weren't doing so well either improved or decided that singing really wasn't for them. If you're currently part of a club, think about whether it's a club that you can contribute to in some unique way. If it is, great, then stay in the club and start working towards that. The last type of activity that colleges don't like to see on your application is just random activities that fill the bottom few slots of the activity section. I don't blame you for feeling like you should fill out all 10 activities, but you really shouldn't. When you add things like your summer job at a fast food chain or the day of volunteer service that your school made you do, you're really taking away from those activities at the 
top of your list that the college admissions officers should be focusing on. Would you rather the admissions officer spend all their time focusing on your strong suits, or would you rather have them split up their time evenly so they can review your extensive babysitting experience in slot 10? I hope you guys like this video. If you're still having trouble figuring out which activities to quit, please check out this video about finding your passions and finding ways to connect your activities and create a common thread that will leave college admissions officers loving you. Hit that like button first for a new video every week. And thank you for subscribing. How nice of you. See you later.